morning, beautiful people. Good morning. Welcome to Wealth Builder Wednesday. Good morning. Oh my goodness. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Wealth Builder Wednesday. I'm Teresa B. Wilson, Kingdom Wealth. I'm all about living in the kingdom, talking about the kingdom. Grab you a cup of coffee. Come on in. Grab you a cup of coffee and let's talk about the word. Let's talk about Wealth Builder Wednesday. Um, you know, I had the pleasure, I'm, I've got my notes, because, you know, I can't show up live if I don't have my notes ready. Um, but anyway, I just like to teach Christians about how to create wealth. So you guys come on in, let me know that you're here so I can see. Um, I tried to pull it up on my, hopefully I can pull it up on my phone so I can see your comment. So good morning. Oh, there we are. Good morning. So maybe through that I can see comments. There you go. So good morning, good morning, good morning. But I come on here. I would love to teach all Christians who are ready to be financially free. Grab me a cup of coffee because I'm. it's early here. Well, early for me. It's 10 o'clock. <laughs> it's 10 o'clock. And look, I got all my pink earrings and I like my little pink top. See, I, am, I love colors. I love the color pink too. My office is done up in the color pink. I'm going to talk to you guys today, drink a little bit of my coffee. Um, I had the pleasure of going to Billy Graham Library, and it is so beautiful. If you've never been, the history of Billy Graham is phenomenal, and the impact that he had on government leaders was just amazing to me. And the fact, um, man, that he really... You know, if you look at the life of Billy Graham, talking about an evangelist, because he even went into different countries, talked to different uh, country leaders, talked to the presidents. And so my husband and I, we went with my sister and her husband. So what we were thinking about or talking about is who do you think, so I'm going to ask you this question. So who do you think is our our spiritual leader right now? Like who has the most influence, governmental influence, and I'm talking for righteousness. I'm not talking about unrighteousness. But who do you think is the evangelist of the day? Um, I know, you know, hey, good morning, Keisha. Good to have you. Got your coffee and you're ready. Awesome. So glad to have you here. But, you know, my husband and I were talking, and we were all talking. I was talking to my son because um, my son, a lot of you guys know, he plays the bass for elevation in Raleigh and I know that Stephen Furtick you know is really an evangelist I mean they you know he has a huge ministry it's going awesome God is really blessing it but I don't see him having the governmental like the governmental um spiritual thing going on like with meeting with different presidents and stuff and then I look at you know I know Paula White was an, a spiritual advisor for Donald Trump but do we have any? Do we have any godly spiritual advisors? You know, I listen to a couple of people like Lance Wall now, and I see that he has a little. But I was just wondering, it, leave it in the comments, you know, do you know anybody? Who do you think is our spiritual leader right now that goes into these governmental places to bring the Lord? And maybe they're hidden, you know, maybe maybe they're hidden. I don't know. I, we were just thinking about that because we went to Billy Graham Library. You know, he goes all the way back like to JFK, to Nixon. He goes all the way back there where he had, would go in with the word. And and even though, you know, maybe they didn't listen to him, but at least, you know, there's somebody in there. <laughs> and so now I'm like, Lord, who do we have as a spiritual advisor to our governments? Not just, our, and he, you know, he went into China, he went into Korea, he went into all these different places. So anyway, that's, that's my question for you guys today is like, who is our spiritual advisor? And maybe we need to pray for one. If we don't have one, maybe we really need to pray for one because um, we really need Jesus. I, I'll say, you know, I will say this that when my ministry is working at full capacity, which I know is coming, it's coming quickly because the Lord really just gave me a mandate starting in January to teach his kingdom, to bring people out and to teach his kingdom. He said, my people have been in, in bondage too long with financial problems. And, um, and so, hey, Marcia, so glad to have you. <laughs> and uh, exactly, we, all, we I need a spiritual advisor. So, so what, what I was saying is, okay, that my mandate for 
in January really was God like teach my kingdom. You have to get back out there. You have to almost quit. No, a lot of you don't know. I almost quit because I'm like, okay, I'm just done. Yeah, Paula White was very active, but I don't think she is. You know, it, okay, one thing about, to me, about Billy Graham is he crossed borders. So he was, he wasn't a Democrat. He wasn't a Republican or conservative, which I think is great um, that, that Paula White is a conservative, but but we need somebody in the Democrat, um, you, you know, a spiritual advisor that they would accept in that maybe they could hear the word too. So we need we need one, you know. And I'm not saying that Billy Graham he wasn't politically neutral. What he was was a Christian, and so he could go to both sides and say, you know, hey, you need Jesus. <laughs> so basically, he dealt with a lot of um, ungodly people. And I feel like that it was their chance to get right with the Lord, whether whether they did or not. It was their chance to get right with the Lord. So I I hope, you know, and I'm praying that we do have, a, you know, that God raises up a strong spiritual advisor, Christian spiritual advisor to the governments that we have now. And I know, you know, like I was telling you, the Lord gave me a mandate in January to teach his people. So I changed my church and I call it a training center because now what happens is people come in thinking it's church and I want to teach more. I want to teach more the kingdom. And so when if you come to the training center on Sunday morning, we do worship just like everything. Um, yeah, thank you, Keisha. You're in agreement with me. Exactly. We need one, really, that can go into the other side and bring them to Jesus. So anyway, when I change the training center, it's because it's interactive. You come in, and I just don't just stand there and teach and preach. It's interactive. I ask questions like I do here on live. And, you know, and if you're in my Zoom calls the same way, I ask questions. I try to get you to thinking about things. And so when my ministry, when the ministry goes to full capacity, I'm going to have missionaries in America. I feel like America needs God. I feel like we need... It's kind of like being on an airplane and they tell you when the mask falls down, if you have a child, put your own mask on because if you pass out, you can't help your child. So to me, America needs to put our own mask on. We need some evangelists because how do you change a nation? You change a nation one person at a time. You can't, you can pray for it. You can pray for America. We're called to pray for our leaders and we can pray for America, but you can't change the principalities unless you change the people. The principalities shift when the people shift. So <clears throat> that's why churches are so important. And this is why I support uh, Abundant Life Group, which is my ministry. We support another church in the neighborhood and we actually support other ministries, not just this one. We spend, uh, support here locally, but we do globally also. Why? Because you, your church is to impact your community. The church was set up and people get this so wrong because they reach out to the community and they're like, hey, we want to sell chicken plates. Hey, we want to sell a yard sale because we want, oh, the youth is doing a car wash. And when I was growing up, we sold donuts every weekend. Every weekend we sold donuts because we were called the donut girls. Oh my God, it was so embarrassing. <laughs> That's right. Change the, you change the people, you'll change that in principalities over the air. So I was known as the donut girl and, and me and my two sisters, because we're, you know, we're like, like triplets. I'm only like a few years. I mean, like a, a year. Hey, good morning, Sandy. We're like a year, I think 15 months apart. And I think my other sisters. So, you know, when we were out selling donuts, we were like six, seven and eight or eight, nine and 10. Um, so anyway, one thing about that is the church has been broke. We've been broke, beautiful people. We, beautiful Christian people. We've been broke. And so we can't have the impact because we've all been taught that you either have, you either work or you have a ministry. That you can't have both. That you can't have a successful business and a successful ministry. And that's just not true. And so what happens is that the church is so lacking because the people in the church aren't taught about tithe. They're not taught about offerings. They're not talk, taught about seed. And so this tithe opens the windows of heaven. The offering keeps that perpetual flow going. And then the seed targets whatever you need to target. And because we're, we're taught this manipulation, hey, give me $1,500 if you want $15,000. You need to sow it into here because God's going to set you free. And it doesn't 
doesn't work like that. God says, those that give to the poor will never lack anything. Those that give to the poor will never lack anything. So if the word of God says that, then God's people need to know to give. Okay, so then let's say that we do give. So then we have all these chicken sales. I'm going to get back to that. So we get, so I can end the story and go on to the next one. So we have all of these chicken plate sales. We have all of these car washes. We have as churches, and I, I agree, you know, I, I put myself in there because, you know, I'm part of the church, part of the church. So the, the world says, well, you can't take care of your own. Why do I want to go there? You can't even take care of your own people that you have maybe 30 people that gather and you can't pay your light bill or whatever bill and we should be impacting our community the church has to come out of the four walls start doing outreach in the community because that's how you impact your town so the church impacts the community the community impacts the town the town impacts the state the state impacts the country and the country impacts the world I hope that makes sense to you guys. So when God told me all of, you know, how this is supposed to operate, we got to come out of our four walls. So then you go, you see these churches, well, I'm going to go do this outreach and I'm going to give it all away free in order to build my church up. That's not kingdom either. We are to give out and be a funnel. So if you have a motive of, I'm going to build my church up. When I, we go out to do outreaches, this is what we say. Jesus loves you. We go to other churches. We go to other churches and set up. We don't just set up here in my community. We go to other churches in the community to set up to give away so that the community knows Jesus loves you. I'm not there to advertise my ministry. I'm there to advertise Jesus. If I advertise Jesus, right? And I start giving out and I advertise this church in the community loves you. We, you know, and I start saying, okay, we want to go out into the community. We want them to know that Jesus loves them. I'm sowing a seed. Then the rest is going to come. But if I go out into the community and I say, well, I'm going to give to you as long as you give to me. Uh, as long, okay, I'm going to give to you, but you need to attend my church. I'm going to give to you. Then it's a hook on it. It's a hook on it. See, I may give to somebody that will never, ever come to church. I may give to somebody that will, you know, that that will never accept Christ. I may give to somebody that I never see again, but I'm going to reap what I sow. That means if I give to the poor, I'm not going to lack anything. So I don't have to give with that hook on it of you owe me. And so when you go and you give out to the community because you want to increase your numbers, you're saying, oh, I got, I got this with a hook on it. No, we are to freely love and freely give. And that's, that's how the kingdom operates. And so, so this is how you displace principalities. So once I impact my community for the Lord, then the principality over my community will change. Okay, to, uh, and then you will have open heavens. You will have a righteous community. Then it will go into my town. Then the principality over my town can change. And then the principality, hey, good morning, Mary. So glad to have you on here. Um, yeah, you may not see it. That's right. Because, you know, you. I, this is my prayer. And this really is my prayer. Lord, let them encounter you. When I walk away, I don't care if they had know my name. I don't care. I don't care if they ever remember me. I don't care if they ever remember my name. But when I walk away, let them know they've encountered Jesus. That That's what we're supposed to do, right? We're supposed to impact our community. God, just let them know that today they have encountered you. And let them remember that. Because if you encounter me, I mean, I may have some good, good insight. But I can't raise the dead, heal the sick and set the captive free. I don't have that power. It's only through Jesus Christ, the authority that's been given to me, and because I represent a kingdom, so I can go out and do this. Um, yes, Leslie, they sure do, okay? Um, and we need, everybody needs provision from the Lord. But the word says, if we give to the poor, this is uh, Pastor uh, Leslie, and he is in India, so glad to have you today. Um but if we give to the poor, God says he, take, he takes care of us. And so then, 
So we have this that we're giving to the poor. And I know most of you on here, I know every one of you, I know that you give to the poor. But then the impact that you you look at your life and you're like, well, I've given all this money away. Uh, my husband had get, and I uh, gave away 10000 We've given away $10,000 to a couple of churches at one time. And then I look back and I'm like, oh, my God, you know, where where did the their giving, we didn't have the harvest. We didn't have the harvest that went with the giving. So what were we missing? What you're missing are opportunities. So you are tithe payer. You give your tithes. You give your tithes. You give your offering. And that's where you begin. And people think, well, I don't need to give, I don't need to give my tithes. I'm on a fixed income. It doesn't matter what you have in your hand. Because let me tell you, you can't have to walk your way out of poverty. I've done this over and over and over. I've seen it in my own life, and I have even witnessed it in other people's lives that I help. So we start, you know, I had a lady um, call me, and she's like, well, you know, I live, uh, we, we're tight. It's tight. You know, things are really tight. Do I, I don't know if I should uh, keep my tithe or should I give my tithe? And I said, well, okay, let's. I don't have an opinion, okay? This is not my opinion. I, what I'm telling you guys is not my opinion. I'm just telling you what does the word say. So you go into Malachi, and in it it says, and Malachi says, to bring the tithe into my house. He doesn't say about the offering. He says, bring the tithe. The offering is something else. He said, you're robbing me in tithes and offering. And when he talks about robbing him in tithes and offering, it means that you're tying up my hands and keeping me from blessing you because these are biblical principles. These are the principles that I set up to bless you. The world can't understand it. Hey, Susie, so glad to have you. So the world can't understand what it, what it is to give because we are taught what to pack up, pack up, pack up. We we are to keep it in the bank. We are to store up, store up, store up. The government's going to fail. The economy's going to fail. Everything's going to fail, right? America's going to hell in a handbasket. All of these countries are going to hell in a handbasket. We can't pay our debt. We owe too much. But if we understand that the provision of the Lord, he says, do these principles, and it doesn't matter what economy you're in, he said, I can bless you. In Ephesians, I think it's Ephesians 6 and 9, don't quote me on that, but I know it's in Ephesians. He said that he can bless you whether you're bound or free. It doesn't matter whether you are slave or whether you are free. It doesn't hold God back from blessing you. He can still bless you. Look, okay, look at the children of Israel. When they left out of slavery, they left rich. They left with everything that the Egyptians had. They left with the gold, the silver. They left with the money. They left with everything. Um, why? Because God says, I can bless you with your bond or free. So when we hold on to our tithe, we are saying, I, I can't trust you, Lord. And yet in Malachi, it says to trust him. He says, prove me. It's only scripture, <laughs> only scripture in the Bible that says, prove me. It says in some things, it says, test me. In some, it says, prove me. If I will not open up the windows of heaven. Open up the windows of heaven. So as a tithe payer and giving offering and sowing seeds, how do you harvest that? So I've paid tithes for years and I still don't have no money. I paid, I've given offering for years. I don't have any money. What you do is you have to partner with the Holy Spirit. Number one, are you giving tithes to the right place? You know, um, okay, please pray. Uh, Pastor Leslie says, Please pray for this year. We are still not got sponsorship for the summer vacation Bible school for children. Anyone want uh, to help? He's got his, his PayPal stuff out there. So right there, right there's an opportunity. If you need to give an offering or sow a seed, right there's a great opportunity with Pastor Leslie. So the thing about it is, okay, so why aren't you seeing a harvest? You've given your tithe. You're giving your offerings. You know, where are you giving your tithe to? Take a look. Is my church, is my church a barrel or a funnel? Is my church, does my church keep this tithe and not do any outreach? And I don't care if you go to a mega church like Elevation or you go to a small church that has 10 people. If you have a church that's too small to do outreach,
outreaches, then your church should be giving money. We sponsor another church monthly in order for them to do outreach daily. They're doing outreaches daily. So we sponsor them monthly in order for them to do it daily. So because we are small congregation. So you need to say, is my church a barrel or is it a funnel? So then you start paying your tithes. I say, you know, giving your tithes because I feel like it says to bring. That, that I don't feel like you pay them. I think you bring them in and you give them to the Lord. So here you are. You have your tithe and you're out there. So what has happened to you where you're not getting anything back? So I'm going to talk to you about your harvest for just a few minutes. Your harvest is opportunities. We miss opportunities every single day. We miss the opportunities that God wants to bless you. So let's say you're giving your tithe, you're offering, and your seed, and now God is presenting you with an opportunity. Your opportunity can walk right in the door and ask a question. Your opportunity can can uh, be uh, over here in a conversation in a grocery store. Your opportunity is all around you, but your eyes have to be open to the opportunity. I remember um, we were living in Florida and things had got really tight and um, and an opportunity walked in my door. Uh, a young girl came in uh, that was there to see my son and she's like, yeah, I'm getting ready to shut down my business and I'm just tired. I want to work a job. Um, it was a pharmaceutical delivery business and she's like, yeah, I'm tired of doing that. I want to do something different. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut this business down. My ears perked up. Woo! Okay, uh, here's an opportunity, right? So I asked her, why are you shutting it down? And she's like, well, I'm just tired of doing, I am just tired of, you know, just doing this delivery business eight, nine hours a day. Um, she had nine drivers. And I said, would you consider selling it? And she's like, mm, yeah, would you finance it? I'll pay you monthly. You know what it's bringing in. I'll pay you monthly. Would you finance it? She's like, mm, yes. Okay. Most people wouldn't have seen that as an opportunity. It would have just said, Phew. Um, because why? Because I didn't have the money to pull out and pay her for this business. But what I did have was a, a plan that God had given me. And so this thing works for other people as well. It works for you. It works for everybody. Ask God to open your eyes to the opportunity. Where you get stuck at, beautiful people, and I love every single one of you. You know I do. I love, I love that you show up live. I love that you're showing up for the Lord. And let me tell you something. God is going to show up for you in a mighty way. You're going to be amazed because this is the year for your year to prosper. But what happens is we miss our opportunities because we don't understand that there is an opportunity. So the Lord... I hear this all the time. Well, the Lord told me to write a book two years ago. Well, the Lord told me to start a YouTube channel. Well, I do all of this work. I do all of this crochet work and I do all of this artwork. And, um, and, and I just, you know, I just love doing crafts. And yet these are businesses that God's trying to, to tell you, well, the Lord told me to do Facebook lives. Well, the Lord told me I needed to start a ministry. Well, the Lord told me I need to go feed the homeless. We have, there are opportunities. There are opportunities that you're missing. You didn't start the YouTube channel. You didn't write the book. You didn't get on Facebook Live. You didn't get on TikTok with doing your crafts and letting people see how you do your crafts and selling your, your stuff on TikTok. You didn't do any of that. Why? Because you didn't see that God's trying to bring you a business or an opportunity to you. I remember in this area, there was a lady that um, started a candle business in her uh, garage. And this is in Fayetteville, North Carolina. You can look it up. I think it's Southern Elegance. Uh, I think it's Southern Elegance Candle Company. I'm not sure. You need to go read her story because it's in this area. Fayetteville is about 45 minutes from me. But she started in her basement. I mean, not in her basement, in her garage. And she was a single mother living on a fixed income she started this candle company and now she's a multi-millionaire her candles are well known throughout everywhere why because she heard a voice and she did what she loves to do which is make candles okay and we have all of this stuff i was talking to uh, one of my clients yesterday and she's like well um, I have packed up all this stuff, and I have stuff to make soaps with. I have stuff to make bath bombs with. You know, I got stuff to make scrubs with. What? Yeah, I just packed it all up in the closet. 
Get that stuff out. This is your opportunity. These are your opportunities, and we don't see it because we think that somebody's going to write us a big check. Well, I'm going to get this big check. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. It ain't coming. It ain't coming because God told you to start a YouTube channel. God told you to start a coaching business. God told you to start a ministry. God told you to help married people. God told you to help unmarried people. God told you that you need to go out and feed the homeless. These are ways that God wants to set you up to succeed. But if you don't hear it, maybe you heard somebody wanted to sell their business, but you don't have the money for it. Maybe somebody wants to sell, maybe somebody, um, you know, wants to go into partnership with you. Maybe somebody, um, you know, you hear that uh, there's a condo for sale and you could do an Airbnb. So you have all of these missed opportunities because you can't see that what you're doing, you can only work so much to create so much income. You can make $100 an hour and you can only, there's only so many hours in a day that you can make $100 an hour. But you have to have a business in order to create wealth. You're going to have to have something that you can put your hand to that brings in money. Yes, this lady, she started out making candles at home. But guess what? Now she has a whole warehouse where other people make her, her candles. And all she has to do is sell them. All she has to do is sell them. So we have to start small and go big. And because we live in a kingdom, what does it say? Don't despise the day of small beginnings because you're going to start small and you're going to go big. And so today, beautiful people, you know, I just want to tell you that we started boot camp the uh, 1st of April, Wealth Builder Boot Camp, and it has been amazing. We've heard testimony after testimony. Last night, one lady um, was talking about, Monique was talking about, she gave $10 to as a tip for an offering. And she went to pay her, um, she has a, a um, sober living home in Las Vegas. And so she goes to pay the electric bill on her home and that home. And somebody had given a thousand dollars and they're like, well, you paid it. She's like, no, I didn't. Yes, you did. You wrote us a check for a thousand dollars. And she's like, I know I didn't. Well, they're like, well, it's paid. So your light bills, you've got a thousand dollar credit on your electric bill. I'm like, oh, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's how God does. And so, and so you may have missed out on boot camp, but you haven't missed it because right now um, I am opening up, um, it's a new program. It's called Five Steps to Money Mastery, and it's a new video package where you can purchase and you can, you can go through the program and just see what we're doing. Um, hey, Marsha. Um, okay. How do we change between God and our own desires or believing? Okay. Let me get my glasses. So, how, or believing in God to provide or acting recklessly. First of all, your relationship with the Lord is greater, <laughs> greater than that. God places the desires in your heart. He says that, I, what does he say? He said, I'm going to give you the desires of your heart. So first of all, he places that desire in us. So when it's time to feed the homeless, you're going to feel the greatest desire to, feel the, to feed the homeless. When you want to create soaps, you're going to feel that draw to create soaps. And so you feel that urge and you'll put it to the back. You'll feel that urge and you'll put it to the back. That can't be God. And it is God. Okay, so... So how so how do we act recklessly? So how would you how would you say okay, the only way to act recklessly is not doing it. That's the only way. If you step out in faith, if you take one step, God's going to take five. But what happens is we start a business and maybe that maybe we start a business and we know that God's called us to us and we're still broke. Well, we have to speak to that business. You will prosper. The word says that whatever I put my hands to prospers. The word also says is that he gives you the ability to create wealth. So you're going to be able to create wealth with the thing that God has given you to do. But we're going to have to begin to take the authority because that authority has been given to us and say, you know, I have an artist friend that she looks at her paintings and she said, you will sell for $2,500 and you will go to the right home, right? And so she begins to speak it out what she wants to happen because the Lord says what? The power of life selling that and death, I can't sell nothing, is in my tongue. I can either create or I can either kill. So I, you will sell. 
And the same way with a realtor that I was working with. Okay, five houses, you will sell. These five houses will sell. Okay, so, or I can't sell nothing. I, I, I got all these listings and I ain't sold nothing. So you're coming into agreement with heaven or you're coming into agreement with hell. You're coming into agreement with life or you're coming into agreement with death. So there's no reckless out there. And the other thing is maybe you start a business and you failed. Okay, so that business that I had, the pharmaceutical business, was stolen from me. I didn't stop. Kept on going, okay? All right, now the enemy's got to pay me back seven times for the business he stole, right? And um, and so we move forward that way. But the problem is you don't trust yourself. You don't, you're not trusting yourself to really hear God. And so... And God speaks most of the time, it's this still small voice, not this loud thunder. He doesn't say, go do. It, you'll feel this pushing. You'll feel this urge. You'll feel this urge. It's just a little unction. It's a little unction. You know, just like you, you'll be led to give. And God said, give them $10. Give them $20. Or you'll feel led. I need to get on YouTube. I just, I don't know why I'm going to say it. I just need to get on YouTube. I just, I just need to. And, and when you feel that unction, just start and let God figure it out as you go along. You partner with this with the Spirit. You know, I even think about uh, coaching. I was doing um, business coaching, and uh, and uh, the Lord at the first of the year said, "Close all of that out and start teaching the kingdom." And now He's bringing back the business part of it because I had to start teaching the kingdom because the kingdom and business go hand in hand. And I hope I answered your question, Marcia. Um, if I did, if I didn't, let me know, and maybe we could get on a call, and I could help you. So to understand a little bit about this teaching, and we have boot camp underway. We're hearing so many testimonies of what the Lord is doing, and so I created a, a video series. It's called five, "The First Five Steps to Money Mastery," and it's a brand new video series. And I did it so that you could understand what I'm teaching and how I'm teaching it so that you don't have to wait 12 weeks out. You can go get the program now. It's called um, the five first. I got to look it up because it's brand new. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's get on a call. I'll, I'll send you um, my link if you guys would like to get on a discovery call with me and we'll, we'll have a great conversation. Um, and I, and I will do a strategy session with you because you don't know what you don't know. And sometimes we have it in front of us and we can't see it. It's, it's like we're blinded to what, what's right there in front of us. And so that's why I created the first five steps to money mastery is because you can take this, go through the, the 12 steps of what I went through, and in it are strategies that you can implement immediately. Like, And you can learn just these really simple financial things, uh, biblical principles that will bring you financial freedom quicker and easier than you ever thought before. And there's, because what happens is we have this mindset of how money works. And then we have this experience of how we work with money and we think that we're not good stewards or we think that, um, well, I don't make enough money to give tithes or I don't make enough money. And actually you do make enough money. Actually you do make enough money to give. Because if you look at the widow, the Lord says, what do you have in your hand? He never asks you to give. He says, I give seed to the sower. So he never asks you to give what you don't have. But you, he asks you to step out on faith to receive. You're going to have to step out on faith in these opportunities that God's given you. You're going to have to step out on faith in these opportunities and trust the Lord and yourself that you've heard God. And if you haven't got to make it, if you haven't heard the Lord or it's wrong, Okay, let me, I'll give you an example. I'm going to give you a perfect example. And, and I think this will help all of you too. But um, there was this guy and he wanted to go into another country and start a school. I'm going to drink a little bit of coffee. My throat is dry. You got to take you a sip. But this guy goes into another country and he wants to build a school. It's going to cost $2 million. So... He goes around and he gathers up money from every church. He does everything. He goes around talking up the school, talking up the school. Well, we need this school. We need this school. We need this school. I've heard a word from the Lord. I need this school. I need this school. And so he gathered up $2 million to go into this country to build a school. 
the school was built. It was beautiful, and it was ready to open. And so on opening day, two students showed up. Two <laughs> students showed up. And he had just spent, he's like, God, I'm such a fraud. I have spent all of this money for this school. He's like, I spent all of this money for this school and wasted people's money. And Lord, this was your money. And oh my Lord, oh my God, I missed you. How did I miss you this bad? And the Lord said, did you learn something? He said, yeah, I learned a lot. He said, okay, what's $2 million to me? He said, so you spent $2 million. I can give you $2 million more. $2 million is nothing to me. Did you learn? Yes. Were you obedient to what you thought I said? Yes. God said, I'm going to honor that. So if we understand the principles, if we live by those principles, we are led by the Lord, we're led by the Holy Spirit, then, then the thing about it is we have to know is that God has us in the good decisions and the bad decisions. If we trust the Lord, even if we go off, he's going to pull us back. So you don't have to be afraid of being, you don't have to be afraid of making the wrong decisions, just partner with the Lord and he's going to honor for you. When you hear the Lord, he's going to honor that for you. So anyway, beautiful people, I'm going to close out with the multiplication prayer. But, um, if you're not in the boot camp, I suggest you go get the five step, the first five steps to money mastery, because it really is going to give you a taste of the kingdom. It's going to get your feet wet. It's going to activate you in it so that you can understand more because I can't tell you in 30, 40 minutes on a live. I can't teach you everything. But in this video series, you will get a taste of what I'm talking about. You will get um, just simple techniques so that you can get financially free really fast. And then you can come back here with your testimonies. So I'm going to put the link is in the description if you want to go there. Also, if you want to book a discovery call with me, that's great. I would love to do it. A free strategy session, a discovery call, 10 to 15 minutes. A strategy session is 45. If you want to book that, I'll put my calendar link there too. So you guys will have that. And I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Thank you for showing up here live. Thank you for watching the replay. Let me know you're here. Leave a comment so I know that you're here. Also, if you know somebody who needs to hear this, please share it with them. You know, like this video, share it so the algorithm can get out there and people can see it. And we can get some people financially free this year. I'm talking about this year. What are we? We're in May. There's plenty of time to be free. So anyway, beautiful people, I'm going to say the multiplication uh, prayer. And if you need to email me, you can email me at Teresa B. Wilson coaching at gmail.com. Also, I have a free gift for you. If you go to www.teresabwilson.com, get your free gift there. All right, let me say the multiplication prayer. Lord, I thank you for everyone that's here today on the live and the replay. Lord, I ask Heavenly Father that any tithe offering or seed that went out, Lord, that we place it into your kingdom. We ask that you bless it and multiply it where it went out and back into them. Lord, I'm asking that you open up the windows of heaven and pour them out a blessing so large they can't receive it all. Lord, I am asking, Heavenly Father, that your word says you rebuke the devourer on their behalf, and I thank you for doing that. Lord, where the enemy has stolen everything, Lord, I ask Heavenly Father that, that he has to pay it back seven times, even if it bankrupts hell. And Lord, I ask where there is poverty, let there be prosperity. Where there is light, let there be abundance. Lord, your word says that you crown our year with your goodness and your path drips with abundance. So everyone that's here watching today and on the replay, Lord, I ask that you put them on their, on your path. And Lord, that their path, as they are partnering with you, would drip with that abundance. And so Lord, we just give you the honor. We give you the praise. You are a good God. You are a good Father. Lord, we trust you. We love you. We give you the honor, the praise, the glory, because it's only by you we do anything. Lord, thank you for the blood of Jesus. Thank you for the price. Lord, thank you, Heavenly Father, for the price Jesus paid for us. And so, Lord, we just seal this in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. All right, beautiful people, I will um, <laughs> I will see you guys next week. I come here live. Please invite, like I said, invite people, like, share, and follow. All right, I will talk to you later. Bye.